I have a hypothesis that e-bike conversion kits, where you build a full electric bike from scratch, are starting to become less important as the e-bike market matures. And let me explain why. Electric bikes are more than just weekend fun having machines. A ton of people use these as a form of cheap and reliable transportation. And just like with any vehicle, people have a wide spectrum of budgets and preferences. Within the pre-built bike space, you have many companies like Rad Power, Onyx, Super 73, and these produce bikes from entry level basics to more powerful, feature rich offerings. For the custom e-bike space, I see two main groups of buyers. Group one are enthusiasts who build bikes for fun, and group two are those that want something that they can't directly buy from an existing brand. And in the summer of 2021, when I was looking to buy my first e-bike, I found myself in group number two. I wanted something that currently didn't exist on the market. I essentially wanted a Super 73 frame, but with a much larger battery and about double the motor power. So I ended up buying a bike, a conversion kit, and I built it myself. The reason why I built my own bike is because nothing on the market fit my very specific needs. The bike turned out great. I ended up with a very unique bike that fit my needs almost perfectly. But after riding the bike over 3,000 miles, I came to realize that pre-built bikes do have their advantages. So even though this bike was custom built to my needs, it turned into this Frankenstein. There's no good spot to put the battery, the controller, and I was constantly sinking money into it. So for example, once I added a high speed motor, a heavy battery, it forced me to upgrade other second components like the brakes, kickstand, tires, suspension fork, torque arms, and I basically had to rebuild the entire bike. So if there is an existing product on the market that fits your needs, and from day one it was designed to be an e-bike, that's probably going to be the better choice. But luckily since that point, the e-bike market has matured a lot and it continues to get better and better. And just to illustrate this point, this is the Super 73 S2. It comes in at just under $3,000 and it's a, a classic mid-range bike. But for the price tag of $3,000, the specs are not very impressive at all. The peak power is only 1200 watts, the battery is super small, and the maximum speed is just over 20 miles an hour. But now the market is more competitive and we have bikes like this, the Lyric Graffiti. And visually, it's very similar to Super 73, and the base configuration is around the same price at $2,600. But this bike has some key upgrades. The big one is right here. You can choose to have a dual battery system for not that much more money. You're also going to notice from the images that this has a nice belt drive and the motor is huge. The motor is a peak power of 2500 watts, about double that of the Super 73. With the dual battery configuration, you have close to 100 miles of range. The top speed is much better at 38 miles per hour, and you have nice advanced features like regen braking. So the point I'm trying to make is that a year ago, the Super 73 dominated this category, but it left a lot to be desired, and that's why a lot of people, including myself, went the custom route instead. But today you have lots of better options to choose from. Another awesome bike is the Kepler 52 volt from Aerial Rider. This has the strongest hub motor that Bafang sells. It's a peak of close to 2000 watts. The battery is large at 20 amp hours of capacity, 52 volts. And the bike itself is a nice mountain bike with fat tires. I mean, even the very popular Suron is gonna get some really stiff competition beginning next year from this bike right here, the Raw Mantis. And if you guys wanna be kept up to date with all of the new bikes coming out, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Now, with all that said, the market still is very young and there are some scenarios where it still makes sense to build your own custom bike. I just think that the number of those scenarios are decreasing as the market matures. But currently, there still is a pretty large hole in the market for mid-range systems running on 72 volts. And this kit from NB Power runs 2000 watts at 72 volts at a very affordable price. The kit's not perfect, the controller is huge, there's a ton of cable management to deal with, 
but over my 3000 miles with this kit, I've never had an issue with it. I also think this kit from eBikeLink fills another hole in the market. So this is a powerful direct drive hub motor, but it fits on fat tire bikes. It's one of the best sellers on Amazon, and I've heard lots of good things about this company. So I'll leave both these kits linked down below. And let us know your take on the whole situation. Do you agree with my hypothesis, or do you still like your custom bike builds? If you're still watching and enjoyed, I appreciate the like before you go, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.